We've been asked a number of times why we are spending so much effort developing a multiple stage water rocket when we could just build a massive rocket if we want to go higher. In this video, we're going to do something a little bit different and explain the rocket science influencing our design in more detail. Hello and welcome to part 3 of Project Gemini, the advanced two-stage water rocket research project. In this episode, we're going to be addressing the advantages of building a multiple stage water rocket since we've been asked a number of times why we would complicate our rocket design by adding multiple stages and choosing this elaborate design over simply making the rocket really big. The answer is quite interesting if you're into math and engineering, but don't worry, we're going to explain it in common terms so that anyone can appreciate the concept. Let's have a look. Russian rocket scientist Konstantin Tsiolkovsky came up with his rocket equation, which tells us that the change of velocity achievable for rockets is equal to the engine exhaust velocity times the natural log of the initial mass divided by the final mass. What this means in simpler terms is that the greater the difference between the starting and ending mass of the rocket, the greater the maximum speed of the rocket will be. For suborbital rockets, the higher speed generally indicates a higher peak altitude will be achieved. Let us take one of our simple single stage water rockets as an example. We have this rocket that goes a certain altitude, and the exact number is not important for this example. The total mass of the rocket is the empty weight of the rocket, called the dry mass, plus the weight of the water and compressed air added as the propellant. Think of this as the fuel for the rocket. When launched, the rocket expels the fuel as it flies and it gets to a point where all the fuel is used up. The difference between the initial and final mass is the mass of the fuel. So the rocket now has a certain top speed determined by the change in mass. If we make this rocket a bit bigger, it can hold more fuel, and the difference between the starting and ending mass will increase, so the rocket can go faster and therefore grow higher. This explains the popularity of various methods for joining models together to make larger water rockets, since this is an easy way to get them to go higher. But what if we want to go really high? Why can't we just supersize the rocket? Why not just make it gigantic? Won't that make it go super high? The answer to this question is that scaling up in size only works to a point. Thinking it through, the larger the rocket becomes, the dry mass of the rocket has to increase as the mechanical structure of the rocket must become larger and stronger to carry the weight of the additional fuel. The larger that you make the rocket, the more aerodynamic drag will be acting upon it to slow it down as well. Because of these factors, beyond a certain point, the bigger rocket will start to perform worse than the smaller one. So how do we fix this? We use multiple stage rockets. Multiple stage rockets get around this limitation by taking the most advantage of the rocket equation by reducing the dry mass of the rocket as it ascends. The separation of stages is essentially the same as discarding extra fuel tanks once they are empty. By shedding this extra dry mass, the rocket can make its final mass much less and by doing so reach a higher final velocity. In other words, it can go higher. This is what we are hoping to accomplish with Project Gemini.
If everything goes according to plan, we hope to set a new Water Rocket Achievement World Record Association Class B World Altitude Record for water rockets using this technique. That's what Project Gemini is all about. We hope you enjoyed this video and that it answers your questions about multiple stage rockets. If you like this video, let us know in the comments below and we'll make more videos just like it. If you hated this video, also let us know down below and we can learn from our mistake. We appreciate all your feedback and constructive criticisms. In our next Project Gemini video, we will be designing, building, and testing our Mark 43 staging mechanism, which we will explain in detail how it works and how it differs from previous concepts. We hope that you will join us as we continue our development of Project Gemini and some of the other interesting projects we will be announcing very shortly. That's all for now. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.